Hi, everybody. I'm James Harris, and this is David Pons, my business partner. And this is Rise Above the Ranks, which is the sister publication to readtheblueprint.com. Each week, we're going to discuss a topic of conversation that will make you better at your job. Today's segment, we're going to be discussing choosing the right brokerage, which we believe is extremely important to the industry. I think we should just jump right into it, Dave. You and I starting in the business 10, 11 years ago, didn't know what the hell we were doing. And we went and joined a brokerage. You remember it, right? They were like, we want you, we want you. And you and I thought, oh my God, this is amazing. Prudential. Uh, exactly. We won't mention names, no fault to the person in question. Actually, it happens to be a really nice guy that I invited to my 30th birthday. Do you remember? I remember it, At yes. Mastro's. And we joined that brokerage. And we were kind of part-timing at that point, do you remember? Because yep. we couldn't afford to go right into real estate because yep. we would have we basically had no money. So we joined the brokerage and the person that recruited us left. Yes. Didn't I remember. even tell us. But I remember you and I going for our first interview and we thought it was such a big deal and we had this interview. It was a big deal. It really was. And we got hired on the spot and we thought, <laughs> wow, this is amazing. They want us. And we were like, this is incredible. But what we didn't realize is every brokerage for the most part is trying to recruit agents because it's a numbers game. But it's not always about that. The brokerage has to be catered to the person, not totally. the person to the brokerage is how I feel. And then when we moved over to another brokerage, what we realized quickly is that we were hitting up, do you remember Bel Air, Beverly Hills, the yep. Hollywood Hills and West Hollywood, we went straight for it, right? And we kind of realized the brokerage we were with was great. They gave us incredible support, but they were kind of more West Side. Yep. And it didn't support what we were already creating as a brand. We'd already set up Bond Street Partners at that point. Yep. With our website. That's right. Which we spoke about in the last podcast. Yep. Um, and we just kind of gradually realized that where we're going is not nothing to do with the brokerage. The brokerage we were at was amazing. It just wasn't right for us. And it yep. goes back to your point. It's very subjective. A brokerage can work for some people that may work differently for other people. And I feel that we eventually got to the agency because Mauricio specifically, right, was kind of aligned as far as the market that we were trying to reach. And we actually right. took Mauricio, and by the way, if anyone wants to reach out to us from this point, right, and want us to go on a listing meeting with them to try and get that listing and break into that market if they have a good lead, we did that with Mauricio at the yes, beginning. we did. We didn't have the track record. So you, there's no ego involved. There's no like, you know, uh, bravado. It's like we did didn't have the track record we wanted to break into the higher market so we took Mauricio with us and that's when we first joined the agency and I think that was our natural progression agreed a hundred percent and I think for us Mauricio covered a market share that we wanted to cover yeah. and we looked at each other and we're like why are we going up against this guy let's join this guy yeah um, but I do feel that every individual getting into the business is different to the next right certain brokerages offer 9 to 6 p.m. contract classes and negotiation classes. Do you remember when we sat in the contract class? We, we got a, What a nice guy he was, Scott, right? Yes. And we'd sit in the boardroom because we didn't have, we didn't have an assistant. We didn't have a track record. We yep. didn't know what the contracts were. Do you remember that? Yep. And he literally, every letter on every word had yep. a red line on it. And in case you don't know, James and I have very bad ADD, right? I think I have an H in there too. I think it's ADHD. You do have an H. Yeah, you, big capital H. A couple of H's actually. Yes. Exactly. Um, and, and literally would sit in that thing and I could tell within like two seconds you chewed up about five bottle tops. You were like twitching everywhere. I couldn't sit still. And ultimately we ended up getting an assistant. But the point is for most people that don't have ADD or ADHD, the brokerage that do offer the contract classes, it's very, very useful. It's okay. very beneficial yeah. for new agents. Yeah, so certainly. Well, at least it bloody should be. But but certain people love that. They embrace that. They want to sit. They want to learn contracts. They want to get a better understanding of how to close. They want to understand CRMs. They want to understand the different technicalities within a brokerage. Then there's people like David and I who just want to roll up our sleeves, hit the ground running, right, Dave? Totally. And go out and sell. So I think each person needs to really research each brokerage and understand what's right for them. And for us, we didn't want to sit there for 10 hours a day learning the contract. We really just wanted to get out and pound the pavement, mm -hmm. right? So it's all about, I think, and tell me if you agree, identifying who you are as a person, mm -hmm. identifying what you want your brand to be, identifying how deep you want to go in terms of learning, identifying do you want to become an assistant, do you want to join a team, what do you want to do initially, and truly understand sort of how you want to jump into this industry. Do you want to go into the deep end? Do you want to go slow and learn? 
and then really research each independent brokerage and figure out which one is right for you. I feel like we rushed right into it, took the first job offer we got. We were so happy. Instead, we should have probably researched it a little bit more to understand what was the right fit for us. Definitely. Do you agree? It's a, it's, a, it's a big decision and, and it should definitely be well thought out. But the thing is as well, it's not a good look to bounce around brokerages either. Definitely. Which, which back not. to your point, it's even that's why it's so important to really do your research. And by the way, your business might evolve in a way that you didn't expect it to, and then Absolutely. a change is necessary at that point. So if you do change brokerages, it's okay. Yep. But definitely do your research because it's your home. Yeah. And it's important. And the thing is, I I personally, and we shouldn't judge, but we do. If I see an agent that has bounced around from brokerage to brokerage to brokerage. You do question that agent. Is yeah. it their integrity? Do they not know what they're doing? Are they unethical? I think a brokerage is your home. It's your office. It's who you're writing a check to from every single deal that you close. It's a really important decision. I know I can speak now, 10 years later, I'm really happy with the agency, the infrastructure, the brand, the office, the message. Um, and that doesn't mean the agency is going to be right for everybody, but I know for us, it's right for us. It's been 10 years, totally. I mean, I, I have zero doubt in my mind that we're in the right place and we have been. And honestly, it's enabled us to get to where we wanted to go. Like when we, and the, and the brokerage beforehand, we were like, okay, if we're going to move, we want to get to where we want to be. And yep. we're, we're there. It, yep. We did it. Yep. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I do agree because when you bounce around brokerages, it's like, from the outside, it's like, is there something wrong with the brokerage or is there something wrong with you? Correct. Do you know what I mean? You don't want people to think that. Yep. So, yeah. And I also think, you know, we are very fortunate that we went into this luxury world. Define luxury. It's not 5 million, 10 million. It's who you are as a person. I think luxury is a lifestyle. You might be in a different state, in a different market. That's 100,000, 300,000, 500,000. That might be your luxury niche market. But I think you need to match the brokerage to the market that you want to go after, right? You don't necessarily need to go to the biggest and best brokerage. Maybe there's a smaller, more boutique brokerage that's going to cater more to your needs or cater more to who you are mm -hmm. and your ability to grow. Um, and, I, and I really believe don't just go for the biggest and the best. Think about it. Take your time with it. Understand understand it um, and it may work out it may not it's okay if it doesn't but at least I think our advice would be do your research learn about the brokerage make sure they offer everything that you want to come out of the brokerage and then make an educated decision before just jumping into it and I think that's just back to the point it's like we didn't do that yeah no one told us what we're telling you guys amen we fucked up we didn't fuck up it was part of the learning curve but if you want to save a little bit of time yeah we're here to help. Yep. And you know what? That brings me to this. If you are going to fuck up, any mistake you make in this business, and this is something I learned very, very early on, it's not a mistake. Like you just said, it's a learning curve. What do they say? Success is failure turned inside out. Indeed it is. And uh, I couldn't agree with that statement more. It's okay to fail. Get back up and get better. And uh, that's going to wrap up this segment, but we do have a couple of questions, Dave. Um, oh, fabulous. And I love the questions. They are always very funny. Uh, so we're going to start here with Barry. Ha! This is a great question. <laughs> wow. Which one of us is a better dancer? You can have it. I'm going to take it, and, and by I'm the way, crap. That, yeah, that's not a, that, that's not a compliment. <laughs> 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 that is not a compliment. Oh, thank God my Latina wife isn't standing here. She'd rip us both apart. But I'm going to take the win on that one. I just stopped dancing. There was just no point <laughs> anymore. All right. Thanks, Barry, for humiliating the <laughs> pair of us. We appreciate it. Okay, question two from Janet. Janet, thank you. This is a great question. I'm going to start a team with two agents. What is the most important tool to provide them with? I genuinely believe just what I would want, or what we would want is knowledge. Yep. They just let them see what you're doing. You remember how hungry we were when we first started and it yep. was just like, how do I become like that person? And we didn't have that access. Great. Just information and, and, and experience. Let them watch you. Couldn't agree with you more. Information is powerful and in they have this to be industry. An, they have to be an extension of you. Indeed. So if they ain't seeing what you're doing, how are they going to be an extension of you? And the curation of finding the two most important people is the key too. Yeah. You want quality over quantity. Thank you so much for tuning in on Rise Above the Ranks. If you do have a question, 
please go ahead and submit it at hello at readtheblueprint.com. We've enjoyed this episode. There's lots more to come. Thank you so much for tuning in.